Hello, hello everyone. We will get started in just a moment while my co-host gets on and I pin this comment, but today we're gonna to be talking about vaccine hesitancy and the fact that COVID-19 is still here and um, just uh, talking through some of our experience with getting vaccinated. Wednesday. Hello, Rama. How are you? I'm doing okay. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Yes. Uh -oh. Awesome. Sometimes I feel like my speaker is low. But... Hi, hi, hi. I'm going to do my, my influencer squint. Sounds good. Give us the smize. Let me see who's all in. Let's just just waiting for a couple more people to join. <laughs> it's always so funny. Hi, everyone. Please make sure you drop your questions for us as we talk through. Our conversation today. Yes. Come on in. Join us. All right. We got a comment pinned almost. There we go. <laughs> got it. Thank you. There we are. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. You sound good. Um, you want to go ahead and get started? <laughs> sure. Let me close my door here. All right. Hi, everyone. How are you all doing? Uh, thank you for joining us today. We'll introduce ourselves a little bit. And, you know, here we, we're going to be here to kind of discuss a little bit about um, some COVID-19 updates, where we are nationally, where we are at our organization, um, where we are in the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia, better known as the DMV. Um, my name is Rama, and I um, work at Walker Health in the Community Health Department, and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and my co-host today. Hi, I'm Jewel Addy. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I work in the External Affairs Department. Thank you, Jewel. Um, so we'll, as you guys, you all have seen us here at Whitman Walker the past few months, or I think I can say a year now, <laughs> we've been in this space talking through um, <clears throat> our, out we've expanded our outreach efforts to ensure that we cover various topics from HIV, STI, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinants of health, and just general public health interventions and the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic specifically that we've all been faced with in our homes, um, in our lives, in our communities, in our workplaces, as um, the pandemic that we've been most focused on this past year, ways to manage your sexual health, your personal health, and your mental health. Um, and as you know, Whitman Walker, the community health team, um, and Whitman Walker at large, we're here to educate and support you and really just meet you where you are. As I mentioned earlier today, we want to talk about COVID-19 and um, the vaccine hesitancy, the world that's kind of going around there in, um, in all of our healthcare spaces and why Jewel and I both got vaccinated and some data behind COVID-19 vaccines to date. Um, so we'll start a little bit about the vaccine hesitancy and Jewel, I know you were a little... Um, 
you know, you weren't gung ho, you were <laughs> jumping to get the vaccine. Can you share a little bit about your apprehensions and what kind of got you to actually get the COVID-19 vaccine? Yeah. Um, so, well, thank you, Rama. You're definitely one of the folks who helped me, uh, you know, see the light and get my COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, but I was definitely hesitant at the beginning. I, uh, you know, I'm a black person in the U.S. I know about the Tuskegee study. I, you know, know I'm in a country that hasn't always had the health and wellness and like opportunities to thrive uh, as front of mind for black and brown folks. So I, I just, you know, was hesitant and uh, not trusting of our of our healthcare um, system. Wow. Um, I was also scared by how fast the vaccine came out and kind of had made zero plans to get myself vaccinated until at least summertime. I, I, you know, I wasn't like a person who was going into the office or interacting with patients a lot. So I didn't want to take away vaccine from someone else who needed it more. Um, of, course, lo of course, lo and behold, I ended up being on like one of the earlier lists for priority vaccination just because I do go to our health center from time to time. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of waited until I couldn't wait any longer, but I had heard from you and like other colleagues who, um, you know, I was just looking to as a resource uh, about your vaccine experiences. And so from that, I decided I was going to go and get mine. And since y'all hadn't uh, grown any extra toes or any extra tails and were in pretty good health, I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I can do this. But <laughs> I was also just afraid to like get sick from the vaccine. I was afraid of any like repercussions that would come from it and just didn't quite trust it when it first came out. Um, but by the time I got the my by the time I got my back vaccine in January and February, you know, a lot of people had already been vaccinated. They all been in really good health, and I, I felt safer about getting it. Uh, and I actually didn't have any symptoms when I got it. I was one of those few folks who like maybe I got a minor headache and um, some light body aches, but I had taken some Tylenol after my appointment or some ibuprofen or something, and barely felt a thing. So uh, for folks who are like myself and were afraid to get vaccinated because of uh, side effects and symptoms. There are people out there who nothing basically happens to us. We exist. <laughs> um, but Rama, again, as one of the, as someone who got vaccinated so early and someone who inspired me to get vaccinated, uh, and you got vaccinated, I think in December, what led you to get vaccinated and were you scared? Right. I think that, um, well, thank you for sharing your story. And I'm so glad we were able to like, have like an open discussion and you kind of felt you know, finding, finding a safe space to share your, you know, hesitancy or, you know, I really kind of want to focus on that word hesitancy and like fear because at times I think as healthcare providers, we have to be mindful of the language that we use. So hesitancy kind of reflects in a person is like unsure and uncertain, you know, just timid about doing something. And I think sometimes it just requires giving more knowledge and education around as to why a person didn't get vaccinated or doesn't want to get vaccinated rather than just saying they're resistant they don't want to or you know things like that i think sometimes it's like um you know someone saying no actively like rejecting them or reflects you know reflects negatively on them they probably they're probably like you're not willing to educate them and give them the space to learn more about the vaccine right and i think for me being um being vaccinated since december it was i have sickle cells so the vaccine for me just stemmed as, okay, let me learn how this mRNA vaccine was made. Let me learn. It just, it was more so it's better for me to get the vaccine than not because the effects of COVID-19 on me, someone living with a, um, pre with having a pre-existing condition, getting something that would actually allow me to re-engage into society safely, you know, while still, you know, keeping the precautions that were um, recommended by the CDC. It was, just, it was just very important to me. So I think that same space so as working as a healthcare provider, just making sure that providing that same space that I provide for my community members to our clients and our patient population for them to discuss why, their why, like why don't I want this vaccine? And let's see if it's not misinformation. Let's address it. Let's validate it. Because as black and brown people, it is an experience of unethical um, healthcare behavior that we've experienced. It's not something that we didn't just wake up not trusting the healthcare system, right? It was something that happened to us. So we are victims of the healthcare system. So it's important as healthcare providers to kind of own that 
and give people space to discuss why they don't want the vaccine or why they do want the vaccine and kind of mitigate, be that middleman, be that information, be that, you know, the source of information for people. So communities, like I mentioned, who are, they say, rejecting the vaccine, um, it's valid. They're victims. So we're essentially here to kind of let you know that we want to take the time to say that we see you and we hear you and, you know, and your hesitation such rejection is completely valid. But let's make sure that um, you have all the information before making that decision. So, um, so yeah, so Joel, like, what are some of the things that you've heard in community or at work about why folks um, aren't getting the vaccine? Uh, so I think, you know, what we're hearing from our patients who are hesitant or choosing not to get the vaccine is that they're skeptical. Uh, for folks who have not experienced COVID-19, whether it was through a close death or a loved one being diagnosed with COVID or, or them getting it themselves, they just aren't really worried about how this, uh, how COVID might personally impact them. And sometimes they kind of feel like I've survived this long during this crazy pandemic um, just fine. Like, why should I get the vaccine now? Uh, we also hear, uh, like, as a major provider of LGBTQ care or care for LGBTQ communities, we hear um, questions like, you know, will the vaccine affect my hormone replacement therapy and, and how will the vaccine affect my HIV treatment? And, and for folks who are, you know, living or aging with HIV, like, why is there no vaccine for HIV yet? Uh, we also hear things like, I'm undocumented and I'm scared to get a vaccine. Like, I don't know what... Um, IDs or documentation I need to hand over to get my vaccine, so I don't think I should go. Um, and then other times, patients just cite that the vaccine came out too quickly, uh, and they're they're waiting to see what happens. And um, you know, they don't we don't know what the longer term side effects are of the vaccine yet because there have, hasn't been enough time for us to study them. So they're they cite all of these things, but I think more times than not, what we really hear from these these uh, these whys is the lingering effects of generational medical mistrust. We hear, you know, the stories passed down through families and mentions of unethical experiments like Tuskegee here in the U.S. We hear many valid reasons for why people are hesitant to go to the doctor's office, whether without COVID-19 as a, as a global pandemic <laughs> backdrop. Um, and so the need to really push folks to get vaccinated as a, a means of surviving this pandemic isn't quite a strong enough persuader to undo all of those years of medical um, mistrust and unethical medical practice within the healthcare field. And historically, we know that this unethical practice has really been targeted at uh, black, brown, indigenous, and marginalized communities. Um, and we did have a question that came up a little bit earlier. Um, someone asked how we're working on uh, cultural beliefs within the Latinx community and, and religion, for example. I think that's a really great question. And I think that we will flag that for our, our teams for how we're going about our COVID-19 outreach for vaccination. So thank you. Um, yeah. um, let me, I'll just let me kind of add to that. I think that um, representation has been key for us as far as that aspect, because we do have folks um, on our outreach team who also can talk to their hesitancy or rejection of the vaccine due to, you know, cultural beliefs or it's just more so sharing the stories and again, providing that space for folks to feel seen and heard. And then kind of um, when it comes to religious um, faith-based um, spaces, we are, we've partnered up with faith-based organizations to kind of provide them with the, um, the clinical aspect of the vaccine where they're welcome to have the conversation about, you know, the faith base and what it means to keep your community safe, but, you know, what are the restrictions in your religious spaces, but in the same, to, on the, at the same token, providing you with the, um, with this, with the information and the actual science behind the vaccine to kind of encompass your cultural belief and science in that sense, or your religious beliefs. So those conversations are just more so folks being more transparent with us about what they need and partnering with other with faith based organizations. Thank you, Rama. Um, and, and on that note, your, your team has done so much to stay connected to our patients. I'm wondering if you can share um, how your team has been going about addressing you know, fear for the vaccine and, and what advice you've got for community members about how to address this hesitancy or this rejection of, of getting vaccinated um, with their loved ones. And, you know, as we, um, thank you for the question, Alexa. And, um, and we can definitely continue the conversation, Alexa. We're so open to ideas because obviously we know a one size fits all approach 
is not the way to go about healthcare um, and delivering healthcare, especially in such a with the COVID-19 vaccine where it's new to us all in a sense, right? Um, so to address the deeply rooted mistrust and um, as Jewel mentioned before, it is the hesitancy does, um, it stems from the generational mistrust. There are trickles of it, the strains of it, they're still here because uh, we're still experiencing um, unethical medical practices today on black and brown bodies. So that's not gonna go away. Um, so our teams, you know, staying connected with our patients, um, addressing their questions with respect and care has been um, a vital part of our part of our success on this process. And um, Whitman Walker, you know, we've called, we've texted, we've messaged um, patients, you know, repeatedly just to provide them with information because at times we know as a, as a foreigner, there are spaces that, um, like me being a foreigner, I know my family directly, there are spaces that we, um, where we get our information from. Let's take like WhatsApp, for example, right? <laughs> so at times, <laughs> seeing videos that have been edited, um, folks who've kind of turned into stuff because of the vaccine and, and they, word is bond, community word is bond. That is the way, it takes a village. That is our ideology in the space. That's the way we function. Um, uh, validity from the, from the community is vital, you know? So it's, so, so I think dismantling some of that, breaking it down and really having conversation, letting people know that is something that we've done. So we've kind of brought that approach into our, into our outreach here, you know, making sure that we are members of the same community going around to people who look like you and talking to them and kind of building that trust. It really, it really does work ensuring that um, we reflect the communities that we're trying to serve um, has really shown to be effective. So the consistency of the outreach is something that's been really, really shown, you know, it's kind of increased the numbers of folks that we vaccinated, that we've been vac able to vaccinate here, but our black and brown populations are still the ones who are most affected by COVID-19. And that has not changed, although we've been able to um, give folks the vaccine and really reach out to folks, but it hasn't changed. So I think our ask, we're just gonna continue leading, meeting people where they are to have these conversations. And speaking of, let's um, kind of get into a little more of the data as to where we currently stand at the national level, June. I mean, June, <laughs> Jewel. <laughs> I can, um, uh, but yeah, so according to today's Axios Vitals newsletter, um, the US is hitting its ceiling on COVID-19 vaccinations, at least amongst adults. Folks just really aren't, uh, getting vaccinated or if, if they were interested, they've already gotten their vaccine. Um, but you know, right now is really a pivotal moment in this pandemic for us um, as we kind of battle this, this Delta variant that's really spreading really fast. Um, and so health experts are fearing that another wave of COVID-19 infections are gonna come amongst the unvaccinated populations. Um, by the numbers, roughly 67% of American adults have had at least one shot of their COVID-19 vaccine and 58% are fully vaccinated according to CDC data. Um, the U.S. also hit its peak in April with more than 4.4 million doses uh, being distributed in a single day that month, but currently the nationwide average is about 500,000 shots per day. Uh, moving forward for COVID-19 vaccinations, President Biden has announced that the U.S. will continue to wind down its mass vaccination sites and shift its gears more towards um, localized efforts and distributing vaccines in doctors' offices. Um, so we just really want to emphasize again, it's, it's really important that young people get vaccinated. Um, this is like your 18 to 24, your 18 to 35, your 18 plus up to like 45 ish, please get your vaccine. Um, young adults represent one of the most at risk groups for uh, COVID-19 infection. So, um, we've got a tool to help protect you. Uh, please do your research, please call and ask questions. Uh, but it's really imperative that you get vaccinated. And if you aren't vaccinated or don't plan on it, you have to wear your mask indoors at all times and keep your distance from people. Um, there's also two additional groups that are primed for kind of vaccine scheduling. Uh, so these are the folks who are uh, mandated by their employer to get a vaccine if, if their employer did that. And then there's also the folks who've been waiting for that FDA full approval of the COVID-19 vaccine. So hopefully we'll see a bit of a jump um, when those things happen. Wow. That's like so much data. It's almost, <laughs> it's almost scary. But even 
as someone who's fully vaccinated, I think it's so important for me to remember that um, as as frightening as it is, it's it's it really keeps me safe, you know, understanding this information and like ingesting it, digesting the information to make sure that I know that um, getting my vaccine was just one of the ways to protect myself in my community. Because um, like you mentioned, wearing my mask, keeping my distance, because you can still get sick. Yes, the vaccines are not 100%, right? Like, we know that, like, what's 100%, right? So <laughs> there are definitely um, different ways, different steps to take, incremental steps to take to protecting yourself from COVID and your community. So um, Women Walker, you know, we've done more than 50%. Um, more than 50% of our daily COVID-19 vaccination have been administered to patients who identify as Black or African American or um, Latin or who resides in Ward 7 and 8. And if you're familiar with the D.C. area, you'll know that um, Ward 7 and 8, nationally known to be a food and health care desert and, um, and have no shown the highest rates of the COVID-19, um, <clears throat> of COVID-19 infection. So therefore, you know, having that keeping that in mind those are our black and brown communities so we're really grateful to have played a small part in keeping our neighbors safe and our patients healthy so just as Jill mentioned the delta variant is becoming dominant and is more transmittable it's much easier to catch something that you know you thought was contained in the uk it has spread you know globally it is we found with our cases in the united states and the best way for you to um, lower your chances and like, you know, or increase your chances of um, being hospitalized or it being fatal is honestly to get the vaccine. And it's, I would encourage you to talk to someone, someone I, you trust. To decrease the chances of, of getting COVID, right? Decrease, yes. To decrease <laughs> getting COVID. <laughs> yeah. That's the best way to do it. And then uh, all in all, like you mentioned, COVID is still here. It's still impacting Black and brown folks more, just like every other health issue. It didn't start with COVID. Again, that's why it's really on healthcare providers to also continue the fight to um, to validate our um our services and validate our, our clients and our customers and like ourselves, give folks autonomy to ask questions and understand that their healthcare is theirs. They're allowed to um, function as they please, but we are here to provide that support and information that you all need, you know, to learn more about, if anything, consider getting vaccinated or, you know, nothing else, learn more about your hesitancy. Ask why you're hesitant to the vaccine talk it out or research it out. Like for me, I had to really understand what the emergency authorized, authorized emergency use was. And um, it was, you know, understanding like what that means. It's, we are, we were in a state of emergency. So that's why we needed it. So I think it's extremely important to make sure. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. Someone shared that I got vaccinated because I want to live. Absolutely you know, and we know the, um, the effects of it. Hospitalization has decreased. Like now, although our numbers are going down, we see these numbers. We have to remember that it's affecting us, our communities the most. We are still dying from COVID-19 when um, the vaccine really reduces that, you know. Um, so remember, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, continue to wear your mask. It's imperative that you continue to wear your mask. The CDC also recommends that, actually requires that you have to continue wearing your mask if you are not fully vaccinated. And fully vaccinated is two weeks after your um, after your second dose if you receive the uh, the Pfizer or Moderna. But J and J, as you all know, it um. <clears throat> It's just that one shot, one and done. And it's um, the two weeks after that shot. And <clears throat> follow the CDC guidelines if you've been vaccinated. Um, but with that in mind, remember, that's knowing that the folks around you, we have no, we do not, we're running on an honor system. The healthcare is choosing <laughs> to run an honor system as to who's been vaccinated and who hasn't. So keep that in mind. 
you're around strangers, so if you're indoor, if you cannot have those conversations with folks about their vaccine statuses or you're, you're sure that they've been vaccinated or not, please keep your mask on. You know, talk to your, talk to your surrounding folks and um, your community members. Encourage people just to understand their why, why they're hesitant. Be open to have conversation. Use us as a resource. You know, Women Walker, we're here to support you and we see you and the mistrust is valid. As healthcare providers, we're going to continue to work to give you that space to keep you safe, to let you know that we see you and, and you know, kind of dismantle the misinformation that's out there about COVID-19, especially in my foreign and in my black and brown communities. So thank you so much for joining us. And we see you have, if you wanna get vaccinated at Women Walker, you have the number pinned down there, reach out to us, or you can email us at appointments at whitman-walker.org. And we will be here to support you. And for more information and to see our lovely faces um, and the other amazing <laughs> outreach folks that sh share this platform to, sh um, to educate us, please make sure that you follow us on all social media platforms, IG, Facebook, Twitter, at Whitman Walker. Okay. And thank you for joining us. And share with us, DM us, what's what your why? Why did you get vaccinated? And why are you hesitant? And let's talk about it. What about you, Joel? Anything else? Uh, no, I think he sums it up perfectly. I think if you feel like you're one of those folks who knows how to have your sexual health testing conversation with your partners, like, hey, like, when did you last get tested? This is a great time to practice that for COVID-19 vaccinations. Have you gotten your vaccine? How come? Do you want my uh, experience about getting vaccinated? Um, but all, a lot of healthcare starts with conversation. So uh, just inviting everyone to just start the conversation. Normalize it. Normalize talking about COVID-19 with your friends, family, strangers, because that's who we have to trust, right? <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone have a good night. Um, Let's see. Do you want to run through if you have questions? It's oh, a yeah. lot in here. We appreciate you all. I see a lot of Open Walker family in here. Hi, everybody. Looks like a love, love. So much love to you all. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, we'll have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.